Hello, my name is Henry Emfrey. This is a Monkey X2 game development tutorial. This is a tutorial to show you a way to get started using the Monkey X2 programming language. Monkey X2 is made by Mark Sibley, the same people who formulated a very, very good game programming language called Blitz Basic. Monkey X2 is kind of like a Blitz Basic where after you finish making your game, you could click a button and your game could be deployed to uh, the web or desktop games or Android and other platforms. And you can play your games on those other platforms too. I also made a, a tutorial on Blitz Basic 3D if you want to see that and get an idea of what Blitz Basic is. These days, we always hear about Unity Unreal, Godot, Lumberyard, Game Maker, and CryEngine, but this is a very, very good one too. Uh, it allows you to make 2D and 3D games using the traditional programming route. Now, even though I use CopperCube, Play Canvas, Godot, and others, I like the traditional program route for making games the most. It's just personal preference. I feel like with the traditional programming route, uh, I just tend to learn more. And Monkey X2 is a derivative of the BASIC language. Uh, BASIC stands for Beginning All Purpose Symbolic and Instruction Code. And I, I guess even say for the record, I would say this is my favorite language to work in when, when it comes to making games. Maybe I'm just different from uh, other programmers uh, who who prefer to C sharp, C plus plus, Python, and, and JavaScript, and all those. But in the end, it's all the same stuff. You know, if you can program in the basic, if then you can program in those other languages too. It's just the same monster with a different uniform on. And there are ways around uh, not having a scene editor uh, like Unity, Godot, uh, Unreal. CryEngine and even CopperCube and maybe I'll show you that in another tutorial but for now let's get started in me showing you the basics of how to get a game started using the monkey x2 programming language so I already wrote this code out and you can read the comments uh, that I wrote which is after this apostrophe and it's in written in gray and you can stop the tutorial as you need. So I'm just going to go through and explain some of these parts the best I can. Some of the stuff I might not understand myself because what I've done is I combined two of the example files that comes with Monkey X2. There's one called ninja.monkeyx2 and there's another file called castle.monkeyx2. And those are just example game files that comes with this program and what I've done I just took features from both game programs and combined them and then just created my own thing so anyway first thing that you need to do is import these uh, files because these are the things that make your program works copy all these things uh, you know from the import parts through these three using parts and next, I loaded the Skybox. The Skybox is 4,996 by 3,072 pixels in size. Next, I loaded Henry, um, which is me, of course. And it's just a .b3d file. I made a tutorial about how I made um, this b3d file and put all the animations together on one animation film strip and i'll leave a link below on how this uh, b3d file was made and then next are the textures that belongs to this b3d file next is this is a initialization part you just just copy this and then i made a, a variable called place for my scene see the place is the variable and scene is the function that I use. 
you know, in programming, you always use the variable. You don't usually use the original uh, functions. And you'll understand it later. And then I, I also create a variable for my camera. I also create a variable for my light. Light so that I can see is a is the variable, and light is the function. And I named it that way so you can see the difference because it sounds like something that I made up. Then I made a variable for my name and uh, from the function called model. Then I made a variable for the animator function, and then I made another variable for the big wall. And next I made the title and Initialize the size, your, your window size. So my uh, window size is going to be 640 pixels wide and 480 pixels tall. And the rest of the stuff is, and the rest of the stuff is just uh, other things that are needed. Uh, flag, window flag, and that's just something that. You know, goes along with um, you know that that the pro um, that was in the file, and I just put it there. And then you also need this part right here, this super dot new, just just add it. So next, I used a variable to store the scene in, and this variable also stores the skybox that I talked about earlier. And, and then along with the skybox, you can just uh, copy this stuff. And next, I used the Henry variable to store my B3D file that I talked about earlier, that file that I imported up above here. And this is the general way that you can upload your other models too. For example, you might have made something in Blender, your scene or your town or the vehicles or, or other objects that's going to be in your game. And you might have save them as a .fbx file or a .colada file. It's usually a .dae file. I found it kind of hard to find um, ways to convert uh, models to .b3d unless you're using frag motion. I convert them with this website here. Uh, it's called blackthread.io slash gltf converter. It takes FBX, Collada, OBJ. So, so you can upload your file here, uh, switch over to GLTF, your FBX file or your DAE file, your OBJ file, uh, converted here. And maybe if you're watching this sometime in the future, maybe there might be other sites that you can use. Or you can use whatever site that you like. But this is just the way I do it. Here I scaled the character so that it can be big enough on the screen. And then I put my character so that it could be in the middle of the scene. Um, this zero is for the X coordinate. This 30 here is the Y coordinate. And this 10 here is the Z coordinate. And then I used my camera variable and I attached my player Henry to the camera. So you can get that third person view when you're moving around otherwise you'll be just left watching your character walk off into the distance without you and then just copy this uh, camera dot near because I, I don't know what that means the camera dot far this makes it so that you don't run into the sky box that'll be in front of you if this number was like a hundred uh, whenever you press the the arrow keys later for uh, moving the character around, you'll run directly into the skybox. And yeah, feel free to experiment with these different numbers to adjust everything to your liking. And next, I position the camera so that the it'll be directly behind the player, and and so that the player could be in the middle. Next, I set up my light uh, using the variable that I created. I actually didn't rotate these lights. This is just something else that I included from the game example files. Uh, but this is how they had it set up. I just create the variable here. And then I set up my big wall 
minus 100 is the x coordinate, 80 is the y coordinate, 50 is the z coordinate, 1000 is the second x coordinate, this other 1000 is the y2 coordinate, and this 100 here is the z2 coordinate. X is where the line begins, and this X2 coordinate is where the X line ends. This 80, this Y coordinate here, is where the, the vertical line for the box begins, and this 1000 is where the vertical line for the box ends. I hope this makes sense. And then you just include and, and then besides this you just in, include the rest of this stuff and I make my box green so you can just copy all this stuff uh, not the comments but the this white this part I'm sorry and next I uh, position my wall in front of the character and next I use this variable to store my Henry animator and then I use the same variable to store the speed in which the animation will play. In this part I cut up my animations that were on this this B3D file here. You remember? It contains all my animations. It contains the idle animation, it contains the walking animation, it contains the punch animation. So here, cut those animations up. And I abstracted those different animations here. And after abstracting them, I stored them on variables like this one. So um, for my, so in essence, um, my idle animation is uh, the first, it's just the very first frame. You know, I just chose anything for that. And then my walking on that B3D film strip between the second frame and the 30th frame uh, is my walking. And then on that same dot B3D film strip, my punch animation is between uh, 30, the 31st frame and the 99th frame. So again, I uh, sliced all this stuff up and stored them all on variables. I stored my idle animation onto this this first variable. I didn't really number these, but this is how this stuff works. Uh, but anyway, I I sliced the uh, idle animation and, and it was stored on this variable. Um, the walking animation was sliced and stored onto this variable, and the punch animation was sliced and stored onto this variable. And then they were connected to this animator variable. Remember? And then, of course, you end your uh, whole, you end this whole, uh, whenever you have a method loop, you always have to end it. Uh, don't forget. And then uh, next is method render. Method render is putting everything so you can see it. And then um, now we're just putting everything in motion. and on screen. So next I set up the controls. I I use the A button for the punch. You know, I use my animator variable to initiate the punch variable. I use the up button for walking, a move Z that so this means that you'd be walking forward. The next uh, the down button is for you to move backwards. I use my animator variable to for walking for this too. Next is a rotation to the left and rotation to the right. If no button is pressed, then they go to the idle animation. I hope this makes sense. And then, uh, so I put my scene.update, just put this. And then you know rendered the camera, and and I scaled the cameras. On the scale part, when you remember above, this was the height of the window that I set. You remember up here? 
up here I set the width and height of my window. Well, this part allows the window and game to match each other so the, that the game scene window won't be bigger than the entire game's window. That makes sense. So I just um, divide the width into the height. And this also allows you to be able to see everything on screen. It's, if you, Without these two variables, you want, there, be, there might be some things missing on the screen. I, I didn't write these, but uh, this is how it works. Then finally, you know, you, 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 since we're dealing with, um, you close this part out with the N, and you close this out, and you then you closed out the entire class here with this second N variable. And the last thing to do is include this main function and be sure you, to close it with this end statement. Without this main function, of course, your program won't work. So now after we, after you've seen everything, I'm gonna hit F5 to start my game and we'll see what all this stuff looks like. This is what that scene looks like. So we, as we, we can move forward, walk forward. He moves kind of slow, but that's okay. I think you get the picture. Then that's, that's, so I'm pressing the up button to move forward, pressing the back button to move backwards, and then pressing the right button to turn. And you can just turn all the way around. Kind of looks like he's floating in space, but that's okay. I, I think you get the idea. And then I'm pressing the left button to turn back the other way. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And, and hopefully this can be enough to get you started in making games in the Monkey X2 programming language. I really enjoy this language. I like the programming aspect of it because not only I mean does this help with making games, but you know in programming it can be the precursor to learn how to make websites and do all kinds of other things. So that's why I like the I kind of like the programming route a little better. Until next time, thank you.